Hello hackers, welcome to Pwn College. I'm Jan and we are approaching the end of the assembly crash course. Now we're going to talk about how to actually build our assembly programs and uh, play around with them. So recall assembly is called assembly because it is assembled by an assembler into binary code. Um, in order to build the program that we talked about previously that quits, that's all this program does, we have to write it into a file, assemble it, and then we can run it. All right, one thing we need to do to write into a file is tell the assembler what prefix, uh, what syntax we're using. And I mentioned AT&T broke everything by introducing a really bad assembly syntax. We're telling the assembler, hey, we're using the Intel syntax. And then also, if you wanna be extremely explicit with what is a register versus what is named variables, uh, you can prefix all your registers with percent. That looks dumb. Um, I'm sure it doesn't look dumb, but it it's silly for our purposes. We just put no prefix here. Now we can write our program perfectly fine. Anything after a, a hash um, is a comment. You can write whatever there. All right, now. We grab our assembler. What we're actually gonna grab is the full compiler suite because it knows what to figure out. It'll, it'll assemble things for us, all right? We just call GCC, pass it dash no std lib. What this says is, hey, this isn't a C program that uses C libraries. Don't put other libraries in here because they won't work. They expect different things from a C program than, than you're going to give them um, in this for now. I mean, of course, later on they can work. You uh, say, write it to uh, the binary dial file quitter, and then here is my source code, quitter.s. It complains at you, it's gonna tell you, I can't find some symbol, but it's fine, it still works. It guesses where the start of the, of the program is. Just, it's gonna guess it's the first line, which is perfect for you. Um, and then that produces a binary file that you can then execute. All right, if this warning annoys you, you can get rid of it by making your assembly file a little bit more complicated by putting this at the beginning. You say, hey, there's a uh, going to be a variable uh, location. There's going to be a location that defines where to start execution. And hey, here it is. Here's the location, just a, uh, like any other jump label. Um, you can do that to avoid that, that warning if it annoys you. All right. And boom. Just like that, you've built your first assembly program. You've assembled your first assembly program. All right. How do you run it? Like any other program, dot slash quitter, and it's just gonna quit. It's gonna return error co um, uh, return code 42 out of the program. That's the argument to the exit syscall. And you can use the special question mark variable to view it in bash, and it's gonna work. Awesome. All right. You can also get the assembly back out to make sure, um, I mean, that it properly assembled, but there, there are other cases, right? Like reading the assembly of programs that you didn't assemble. You can disassemble a program using objdump. So you tell objdump, hey, I hate reading uh, at and syntax, because that's the default, unfortunately, very unfortunately. Uh, say, give me the Intel disassembly syntax of the quitter program, and here it is. Here is your quitter program. Uh, the, this is the, uh, oper uh, the in uh, assembly instructions. These are, this is 42 in hex, this is 16 in hex, this is the syscall number for exit, and this is the first argument to exit, and then syscall, boom. That's all, that's super simple. This is the uh, uh, binary representation of these instructions. How cool is that? So this 2A is gonna be actually be visible right here. It's, it's, you're moving it into RDI, and why is it a 32-bit number? Anyways, this 2A000000 is a 32-bit uh, value encoded in, uh, ah, no, I still didn't get it. Okay, encoded, or er, stored in little endian. And here's your 3C000000. Cool, and this says, move to RAX, this says move to RDI. And this OF05 is the syscall instruction. And now you have a program. All right, you can also, so, so, so this L file 
that that it was created this quitter file I'm sure you watch the the, the uh, lectures on elf files uh, and prior modules it's a big file it's got like all of this other metadata what if you just want these bytes for example if you just want these bytes so that you can submit them to the um, the kind of grading script of, 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 of the assembly uh, practice problems on Pwn College well you can get them out using this a uh, bit weird command opt copy say dump the section dot text if you remember that text is a section elf where your uh, binary code is dump it into this file from this elf and you just do it so we have these bytes we dump it and then we can hex dump that file and we see it's just the bytes <laughs> pretty cool huh? and then you can pass that to the um, um, uh, grading scripts and you're good to go to the challenge binaries and you're good to go all right of course you're going to introduce bugs this uh, this is this is not there's no doubt that your code is going to be buggy Ada Lovelace one of the original computer programmers in 1843 talked about software errors Thomas Edison in 1878 was already talking about bugs right to mean a hey, errors and of course there's the famous moth found in a computer uh, in um, uh, well I forgot the date 1948 I want to say anyways um, that's like an actual bug causing a software fault but uh, or causing a hardware fault in this case but the the um, the, the term bugs is is quite old and you will have bugs in your program and you will need to debug them all right, how do you debug them? Well, debugging is done with debuggers. Specific special tools for this, such as GDB. Um, okay, uh, GDB will, at a breakpoint, interrupt your program and let you look around. All right, how does this work? Well, it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a special instruction in x86 that says hey I'm a breakpoint debugger I'm a breakpoint and you can just insert it into your code you just insert this int3 instruction that's interrupt3 that's the breakpoint interrupt anyways you just insert it into your instruction instruct uh, into your code if you have a debugger attached it will uh, helpfully uh, stop the program and allow you to inspect its state. Now, if no debugger is attached, your process is going to die because that shouldn't happen. And, and uh, basically the operating system says, whoa, this is not expected. We're just going to shut, shut this whole situation, um, shut the process down and boom. Okay. <coughs> so the debugger can also set breakpoints. You can set breakpoints from a debugger. If you ever use a debugger, you know this, but this is how it works. By default, it just looks at the address you're setting a debugger at and replaces the instruction there with an int3 instruction. And when that instruction is actually hit, then in the background, the debugger just says, oh, okay, well, let's uh, let's let's put the old instruction back and, and execute just that instruction and then swap it back with the, with the, um, with int3. So it, it, this is actually how the debugger works. Now, specifically in the assembly crash course challenges in Pwn College, we provide an automated debugger for you. Anytime your code calls int3 um, in the challenge, we're going to give you a, a helpful printing of the program state and pause until you hit enter. That hopefully will make it easier. You don't have to learn how to use a debugger like GDB yet. We'll hold your hand for now. Uh, but you will need to learn GDB. You also need to use strace very helpful debugging tool s trace will actually run your program and of course to know how to use s trace look at the man page s trace will run your program and uh will just print out every system call that it makes what the arguments it were and what the result was super useful for debugging should be your your first step maybe even before gdb s trace first if you can't figure out from there gdb it all right, other useful tools. Repel, I mentioned it before. 
It allows you to explore effects and instructions. Check it out. It's in the dojo already. Just run Rappel. Boom. Um, and x86 is widely documented. If you want to know anything, this is the nuclear option. The architecture manual created by Intel. This is like thousands of pages long. Um, the This uh, Felix Coltier maintains uh, uh, an instruction listing, very nice clip clickable. And then here's a reference of uh, every x86 instruction and its byte encodings and so forth. Very useful for later modules. All right, well, thank you for following me on this assembly journey. I hope that you have learned an enormous amount and are super excited about assembly. Remember, it's, it's the truest programming language, the simplest programming language, and maybe even the funnest programming language. Now go to the dojo, tackle those challenges, and good luck.